And a happy Tuesday to everybody as we embark on another adventure that is the Investor Guys podcast. How are you doing, Bill? Good, good. Got to poke my screen already. So <laughs> good, good, good. Did you have a good weekend? I, we, I had a great weekend. How about yourself? Excellent. Well, it was terrific. Had a, a very nice lunch with uh, my 19-year-old yesterday who is two weeks away from heading off to OU. So. Uh, we got uh, got his. Uh, he's in a, a communal house. It's uh, really cool. You've probably seen him. They they build these houses. Uh, it's a four bedroom, four bath, and literally with a common area like you would have uh, in an apartment building or, or in a condo. It has a common area which is living room and bath and uh, kitchen, and then each of them have uh, their own bedroom, their own bath. And they have uh, an exterior entrance uh, and an interior entrance that uh, so they can lock up, and it's pretty cool. And pretty it's cool. Very that's, nice. Is that right there on campus in Norman, or it's it's right out right off of campus? He said, "Dad, I could easily walk," um, but it's uh, it's extremely close, and got off a job of, off of like Boyd, Boyd, where they have all that housing off of Boyd, or I think it is off Boyd, yeah. yeah. So. Well, he'll have he'll have fun down there. He'll have uh, yeah, yeah, and, and it's so great for it, you because it's only a three hour drive. Yeah, and I was shocked at how cheap it was. Uh, the thing's only a year old, and they've got uh, because of the way it's built, they can co edit, and so it's four. It's two gals, two guys. Um, the other three are seniors, so he'll be a sophomore. So. I was like, well, good. Listen to them when they tell you how to, how yeah. to navigate OU. Yeah. OU's, you know, it's a great campus too. It's a good walking campus. It's not, it's yeah, not too it's spread out, campus. but it's it's a it's a really nice campus. Uh and it's 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 also really not that far from Oklahoma City. He can get in the car and beat Oklahoma City in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, so it's it's not I a bad. I'm not real sure why he'd want to go to Oklahoma City, but okay. Well, if he needs a mall or if he needs uh, anything, anything beyond what they have right there in Norman. Norman is really, it's it's very OU centric. So oh, yeah. most of what you have there all spins around the college. So if you want something that's outside of that normal, like, he'll go up to Bricktown. Um, he, he'll go to Bricktown. He'll go to all the other places that are up in Oklahoma City. Uh, Bricktown's a huge, huge uh, attraction for anybody who's in that area. Um, he's going to get tired of the the campus scene. He's going to want to get out a little bit. So he'll go up to uh, up to Moore and up to uh, Oklahoma City and uh, maybe even up into Edmond to do some things. He's got him a, a job at, uh, he worked this summer at Chewy, which is a Mexican restaurant here in town. Mm -hmm. They have a location in Norman, uh, right off campus. And they, they want him to come to work up there. I told him, I said, don't, you know, don't move too fast. Now you're, you're getting, this is a way different experience than last year. Cause last year, uh, he really didn't have a college experience last year. He was all uh, done online. And so didn't really mean anything. I said, this, this is going to be very different this year. So well, this first o semester, you may want to hold off. Yeah. And Oklahoma will probably uh, not have mask mandates or anything else unless it gets really, really crazy. So, yeah, I hope not. Into our topic for the day, which, yep. by the way, isn't your 19 year old. <laughs> uh, one of the things that Bill and I are always talking about with each other and with other investors and literally with just everybody um just just it's it's seems to be the hot topic on the street is how hot real estate has yeah. gotten and really how hot it's been um bill was just telling me this morning that he uh looked at a chart and for the 112th month straight and that's that's 10 years um real estate has been up it's just been up and up and up and up and it's yep. to the point now where in markets like mine and probably like Bill's, we literally cannot find a house. We cannot find a property yeah. um, that we can, 
that we can purchase because they are purchasing a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars over asking price. Uh, they aren't realtors aren't even posting these properties on the MLS until they have accepted yeah. offers on them because they know that they can sell them that quick. Um, we deal with a lot of realtors because my wife has a, uh, a real estate photography company and they take the pictures and they say, yeah, I'm just going to send these out to a couple of people who I know are looking and, you know, then they'll go up on the MLS. So don't, you know, get them to me, but don't, you know, let anybody know that it's available because that's one of the things that we used to do. We used to share that information with other people. It's just gotten crazy. So the question is, as real estate investors, if we are in one of these markets where it's going crazy and there's strategies we can use, there are absolutely strategies that we can use where we can purchase properties at market value, at asking price and still get a profit, still get that 50% or more that we want to get. But what happens if we can't find a property where we're looking? What's, what's the solution, Bill? Well, one solution is flips, and that is going in. There's always, even right now, I was looking at a house yesterday. Right now, our market is red, white hot. I mean, it's crazy hot. Uh, but people are looking for houses to buy to live in, and so investor properties are still out there. Now, what happens when the market is really, really hot is that the flip properties you're buying properties that are not in market condition. So as the market's really hot, that not market condition status gets even lower. So a, a property really has to be available only for investors right now in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for us to be able to buy it. Now, it's great because there's still a ton of properties out there that you have to hunt, yes. You have to go see them physically. Yes. Are you likely to pay full price? Absolutely. And so a lot of investors will say, oh, you know, you go to the clubs. And they're like, oh, there's not any deals out there. Everybody's an investor. No, everybody is a wannabe or calls themselves about 10% or less of all those people actually do deals. So I, I don't know. There's some vicarious thrill that these people that show up at the investor clubs that never end up doing a deal. They just like going to They're like soaking up the ambiance and, 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 yeah. and giving their, giving their opinion. We're up on a break, but we'll be back in a second. And we'll talk about some possible solutions, some possible fixes yep. to not being able to find local real estate. We'll be back in just a second. 11 months out of the year, Bill and I host real estate buyers events in cities like Cleveland, Ohio, where we ourselves invest and see great returns. We show investors the types of strategies we're using, the types of properties we're using. We introduce them to people here on the ground and the resources that they can use to get started right away. Day four of this event, we're actually touring properties and making offers on properties. This event was designed to put properties in your portfolio right away, high performing properties. Read more about the Real Estate Buyers event. Get registered. We'll see you at the next event, realestatebuyersevent.com. A lot of real estate training programs claim that they will make you a millionaire, but how many of them will guarantee it? The millionaire Blueprint comes with a millionaire guarantee. I guarantee that if you use the strategies and you use the formulas that you learn in the Millionaire Blueprint, you will be a millionaire. I guarantee that with a double your money back guarantee. Whether you have hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest or absolutely nothing, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to start investing and be a millionaire guaranteed. Now, I can't tell you all about it in this short amount of time, so go to the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com that's the guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com watch the videos there read about the guarantee read more about what we offer with the millionaire blueprint get signed up i'll see you in palm beach we are back and today we're talking about what do you do when you're in a blazing white hot market 
and there are just no properties to be found? Do you pull your hair out? Do you do deals that are probably going to not net you the type of income that you want to do? Or do you look for other options? Do you look for alternatives? Um, in this global economy, we are not nailed down to one particular market. Bill and I yep. both invest in multiple different markets. And the issue I've been having literally since May of this year, and I saw it heating up, but literally since May, the moment that something comes on the, the MLS, it's already been sold. They don't even post it until it's been sold. So in order to find the properties yeah. where we want to find them in the markets where I want to look for them, where I'm specifically looking in Florida, they're just not there because literally everybody is coming down here from New York and New Jersey and Michigan and everywhere else uh, escaping what's going on in their states. And, and they're just blowing Florida up and it's happening in Texas as well. Um, it's just Texas has more space and Texas has a lot more houses and a lot more room to grow uh, here in South Florida. We really don't. We're kind of cramped between the ocean and the swamps. So you're either, you know, living on top of gators or you're living in the water uh, at this point because there's just not that much room for us to grow anymore. So it's just it's turned into a white hot market. Uh, yeah. A lot of locals are literally selling and moving to Tennessee, selling and moving to Georgia, selling and moving further up to you know up north in Florida. Um, it, it's just become that great of a market here. So what do we do, Bill? What do we do? Well, one option is we can always look at other markets where we find inventory. And you and I have one of the places that we go is the Rust Belt, because when you get into the Rust Belt, the demand, both from a political standpoint, from a tax standpoint, and from just a, a general attractiveness standpoint, really doesn't compare to the Sun Belt. And so you have availability to still have deals. Now, their, their markets are way hotter than they normally have been but there's still inventory to be had in a lot of those markets. And, uh, you know, we, you and I both look at uh, Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo. Those are markets that uh, they have plenty of inventory in certain types of property. And one of the properties that we love best, the, the lower income rental properties. Section eight properties. And you know, you one, of the, one of the things I used to love doing was in the springtime, I would love going to those, those Rust Belt states. And I would find people who literally, they said, you know what, this is my last winter here. I, I, I'm, I can't take it. I'm moving to Florida. Now, I don't know if that's going to be happening as much lately because they're not going to be able to afford something. Oh, in Florida. Yeah. But I used to love going there in March and April and talking to these sellers and like, no, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not going through another winter here. You know, I'm selling the house. I mean, and, and to be fair, you know, these are people who are in their 60s and 70s who are ready to yeah. retire. And that that is a strategy when you start getting up into the Northeast and the East Coast, that is one of the strategies. Most people, their plan is to retire someplace warm, whether it's Florida or Texas or Mississippi or Georgia or something like that. They want Arizona. to place yeah. warmer. Yeah. And a lot of those people are snowbirds to begin with. And if you don't know what a snowbird is, a snowbird is someone who lives uh, up up north during the summer when it's beautiful and amazing. And then during the winter when it's cold and snowy, they come down to the southern south of the mason dixon line essentially uh to, to enjoy warmer weather and those those are called snowbirds and a lot of those people have that snowbird mentality anyway they're snowbirds or they aspire to be a snowbird and what's funny is i moved from southern california where it was sunny and warm but when we came here we planned on being snowbirds we planned on doing our our summers up north and our winters down here because summers down here are just like super super hot and humid um we stayed here because we thought that if we, back in May when we were planning all of this, we thought if we stayed here, we'd be able to get some properties because typically summer is the slower time here in Florida. Uh, however, it's just not shaping up to be that, that market that we expected. So we do have other options in other markets. The thing is we have to consider those strategies are going to also be different. And we have to understand what those strategies are for those markets. So for an example, here in Florida, the properties that I'm looking for and that we're buying are vacation properties. They're, they're properties that we're going to put on Airbnb and Verbo, um, primarily vacation properties. Uh, if we're purchasing properties in the Rust Belt, 
we're going to be looking at Section 8 properties uh, or rental properties, you know, low income rental properties, yep. at least. So our strategies are going to be different. So we have to be flexible, not just with the markets that we're looking at, but with our strategies. Now, yep. we've got a couple minutes before we come up on our next break. Bill, how does a new investor or a, a just just off the boat investor uh, get comfortable Easy with, there. <laughs> with going into, you, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm literally someone who's yeah. just, can, just, you know, they're, they're like, they're this new. is it. I'm, I, I want to buy yeah. my first property. Um, how do they get to that comfort level of investing in another market? Because we've got new investors in every single market. You've got new yeah. investors in Texas. We've yeah. got new investors here in Florida. Um, it, it's frustrating because they're looking at the MLS and like, you know what? There's just nothing available. Yeah. Um, how do they get comfortable with, with saying, you know what? I'm in Florida, but I need to invest in in Syracuse. Or I'm in Florida, but I need to invest in Buffalo. I'm in Florida, but I need to invest in Erie, Pennsylvania. How do yeah. how do I get comfortable with that? How do I facilitate? That? How do I make that happen? I think what they have to do is they have to have a coach or a mentor. They have to have a guide, if you will, because if you try to go into a foreign market, and and look, when we're when you live in Texas and you're buying in New York. That's a foreign market. Uh, when you start going into a foreign market and you're trying to go in uh, totally on your own and you have no experience in that market, you don't have the ability to hop on a plane and go spend a week there investigating the market. Uh, you don't have those opportunities at your fingertips, then you are likely to get hammered. So when we look at uh, a lot of markets, I, I used to, um, preach about uh, Detroit, and uh, I think we're probably up on break. So we are coming uh, up on a break. Let's so do that, and we'll come when back. we come back. Yeah, let's, let's talk break. about team building as well, because without yep. a doubt, we have to have a solid team on the ground where we're going to go. Yep. Hi, my name is Kevin Mills. I have a real estate training program that is so powerful, I will back it up with a double your money back guarantee that it will make you a millionaire. That's right double your money back guarantee that you will be a millionaire if you use what you learn in the millionaire blueprint i call it the guaranteed millionaire blueprint and you can read more about it and watch more videos at guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com that's guaranteed millionaire blueprint.com check it out all the information is there Once a month, with the exception of December, Bill and I go to markets where we have experience and we host a real estate buyer's event. These are markets that have great return potential for your real estate portfolio. We're going to show you the properties that we buy. We're going to show you where to buy, where not to buy, the strategies to use to make great income from these properties. We're also going to show you resources and individuals here on the ground that you can use to start building your team so that you can repeat this process over and over. The real estate buyers events are designed to put high performing properties in your portfolio right away. If you're interested in hearing more about the real estate buyers event, realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about the events, check out the schedule and register. We'll see you there. And we're back. And just before the break, we were talking about getting to that that happy space where you feel comfortable moving into another market, whether you're a new investor, especially as a new investor, but even as a seasoned investor, that's something that a lot of people just aren't comfortable doing. I've spoken to people who have properties in just one market and it's their backyard. And they're like, you know what? This is the market I know. I, I don't want to go anywhere else. I'm not going to do it. If, if I have to not purchase real estate for the next 10 years, that's going to be my strategy because I don't want to go to another market. Uh, they're cutting their own throat with that, that mentality, but that's their choice. If that's not you and you want to invest in real estate and look at people who invest in real estate, look at big time real estate investors. They yeah. don't invest in just one spot. They diversify, they invest in other markets, they invest in other areas. Uh, and, and that's, what's great about real estate is your ability to take these strategies and apply them to different markets in different parts sure. of the countries, just knowing 
you know, what strategy you need to apply to that particular market that's going to work best. So in Southern Florida right now, vacation properties are a great, great strategy. Okay. In Syracuse, New York, vacation properties aren't such a great strategy. Um, Section eight would be better. Uh, I would probably not be making as much money as I could uh, if I was doing Section 8 in South Florida right now, I could be making a lot more money doing vacation properties. Um, so it's understanding the right strategies. But part of what's going to help us be able to accommodate this new market is having a team and putting together a team on the ground in that new market. So let's talk about team building. Let's talk about team members. Who do we need on yeah. our team beyond, obviously, a great real estate agent Okay, in that yeah. market and who's going to be you know, looking out for our best interest is going to be sending us properties. What else do we need? Well, and that's where you're always going to start. You, you've got to have an agent that understands what you're trying to achieve with your business and is in alignment with that. So then from that person is going to spin off all of these other things. One of the things as we go under contract, we're going to need is we're going to have to have an inspector. So who are we going to call to get that? Well, we're likely to call our agent for an inspector referral. We're also going to have to have a title company or an attorney, depending on how, what market you're in and how they close, but it's going to be one or two of those. And so are one of those two. So again, I'm back to uh, my agent. You have to refer to Sometimes the seller will, will want to dictate who closes that. A lot of times not. And so I'm going to go back to my agent. Now, once I've gotten my title company and or slash my real estate attorney, uh, in place. Now that gives me another referral resource to go to. Now, obviously I want to have lenders. I can have a hard money lender anywhere. Now, you know, we've talked about Brookview Financial before and I've known AJ since they were a tiny company and you know, 20 plus years ago. And so I could be in Texas, AJ could be in Connecticut as the lender and the property be in, in Buffalo or Rochester and it'd be fine. So whenever you're looking at a lender, that's what you're looking for is somebody that's good with other markets. And so now I've got multiple team members in place. And when I have a lender in place and when I have a title company or slash real estate attorney in place, uh, now on top of my agent, I have additional referral sources. Now I'm going to start looking at if I need to do some work on this property and likely we're going to have to do something. I'm, I'm trying to stay away from major rehab. Uh, when I'm looking at a foreign market, I want to go in. I'm, I'm going to need light stuff. I'm, I'm likely to need uh, paint, probably going to need some flooring in a lot of these cases. Uh, and I know those can add up to big dollars pretty quickly, but it's something that's very, uh, it's pretty easily managed, those two particular things. So again, I'm going to go back to my referral sources and say, hey, do you have a good painter that you wouldn't mind recommending? Uh, and so now I'm looking at, I've got my agent, my lender, my title company slash real estate attorney and my inspector all may have contacts there that I need. And once I get one really good solid contractor contact, well, who do contractors know? They know other contractors. And so I can go one of two routes. I can go the GC route, the general contractor route, and just let them handle it, although that's going to cost you about 20%. Or I can go and handle the subs uh, through my office and save that 20% of whatever the, the uh, cost is I'm going to be spending there. And so I can look at whichever way I want to go. And I'm, I may go, um, there's uh, our friend Dennis uh, buzzing through there. <laughs> So uh, I, I didn't change for you, but it just popped up on the screen just then. It, it uh, so, <laughs> okay. So, well, that was Dennis. So that's that's an agent that uh, Kev and I share. Kev's been uh, using him for years and was uh, kind enough to share him with me. And that's what you find is uh, one of the things that I suggest when people go into foreign markets is that they also join the Real Estate Investment Club there. Now, you're not going to any meetings. Typically, it's 100 bucks a year or something like that. You're not going to any meetings, but you can get a roster of all of the members of the club. And then you can email or call them and go, hey, you know what? I'd like to be able to 
get some referrals if you have anybody you don't mind sharing with me. Uh, and they'll let you know pretty much right up front, yeah, I don't have any, or, or sure, what do you need? And then so, you know, now I start going down that contractor path. I need a handyman. I'm always going to need a plumber and an electrician and a roofer and a painter, uh, but you're always going to need a handyman too. You're going to need drywall folks. Uh, so you just, whatever you need, if uh, foundation, maybe that depends on what part of the country you're in, whether that's a big deal or not. Uh, so just uh, look at uh, getting that referral base built out and think about your own home. If you're brand new, think about your house and, and like, okay, so what could go wrong? Uh, well, my HVAC could go out. So there's a team member that I need. I could have a plumbing issue. I could have an electrical issue. I could have a roof. I could have foundation. I might need my fence repaired. If I have a pool, I'm going to need a pool company. And so if you think about your own living experience, you start to be able to say, okay, here's the people, the contacts, the team members that I'm going to need from a contractor standpoint. And then it's just gathering referrals and, and talk to them. Uh, this first property or two, you're going to spend a lot more time than you normally would. Yeah. So one of the things we want to do is try to try to minimize as many moving parts as we can. Okay. Yeah. And try to get as many key members on our team as possible. The, 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 the most important people for me are a real estate agent and a good property management company. Um, yeah. Having a good contractor uh, as well as great, because before I turn it over to a property manager, I want to make sure that it's ready to go. Um, yep. And typically, that'll be my end, I'll take care of whatever property, you know, improvements need to be done before I hand it over to the property manager. Once I hand it over to the property manager, I want them to be responsible for making sure that they've got a plumber over there if they need a plumber, that they've got uh, somebody over there to fix the window if it needs to be fixed. Uh, and I will leave it up to them. And if when I start getting my bills, from that property manager, things are outrageous, uh, then I'm gonna have a conversation with that property manager because uh, those are not the people who I want them to be using. Uh, if if it's something that that's not being changed, and I change my property manager, it's, it's simple enough to find another property manager yep. who's going to do what you want to do. Um, but I try to minimize as many working moving parts as possible to make it easy. So I have just strategy. two, three people that I'm picking up the phone and talking to. Um, yeah. Last thoughts as we close out this thing. I mean, I encourage you to not, not be intimidated by investing in another yeah. market. And yeah. what it may require is for you to get on a plane or get in the car and go check out this market and get familiar with it. Spend a week in the market. Look at what's available, the different types of properties, find an agent while you're there. Uh, and then also get familiar with that particular town. Fall in love with that town so that you like it. Um, what is the draw? in that particular city, um, spend some time there. And then you're able to do everything back and forth. As, as you just saw, literally Bill is in uh, Texas and an agent from the Rust Belt, which we were just talking about that I've used for, I've known, has been a good friend for decades, probably more than 20 years, uh, just called Bill. You don't have to be there in person in order to transact business. You can do this over the email. You can do this over the phone. Uh, you don't have to be back and forth. No. You can even sign docs via DocuSign wherever you happen yep. to be in the world. Did, did that this morning. So uh, final thoughts before we wrap up. Yeah, I would just say, you know, if you're if you're new or you're inexperienced in buying in other markets, uh, do not let that uh, stop you from moving forward. Is it a little different? Absolutely it is. Are there things we can do? And hey, if you don't have a week to be able to take off and, and go as Jeff suggested, then go on a weekend. You know, hop on a Southwest flight a Friday afternoon when you get off from work and go spend Saturday and part of the day Sunday driving around and checking out neighborhoods and stuff and then come back Sunday night. Uh, but don't let the fact that it's just not your market and not what you're familiar with stop you from moving forward with your investing. That's the thing that I would, because uh, you will regret it down the road. That's the thing that I would wrap with. Yes. You will be looking at the growth in that particular market that you had considered a couple of years ago and saying, you know what? I should, I should have pulled the trigger when I had the chance. So yeah. uh, no matter what, you should be investing in real estate. Don't let things stop you. 
get on it. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you can check out all of our shows at investorguyspodcast.com. We will see you guys again on next Thursday.